Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast. This is episode 22, and today is Tuesday, June 20th. So um, I am coming to you from Santa Cruz, California for the summer. My, I'm out here to do um, in vitro fertilization, but my husband and I live in Arkansas. So um, this is just a summer thing, and I'm filming in my parents' house. And I'm trying to do it, um, this episode, pretty quick because they are out running errands. And I think the gardeners are coming and they're going to be pretty noisy once they get here. So I'm going to try to knock everything out. I have a ton of stuff to show you guys today. Um, we have a finished object, works in progress, and a whole bunch of baby stuff for our charity baby drive. So um, without further ado, well, first off, thank you for coming. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. If you are new, welcome. I am so glad you found my podcast, and I appreciate you guys checking me out and watching and just being interested in what I am knitting. So, all right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's get talking about knitting. So, my first thing I want to show you guys is a finished object. I finished my Perkins Cove pullover. Now... This pullover um, is knit in a linen cotton blend, so I thought it would be perfect for the summer. I heavily modified the pattern to make it fit my size. Um, and I will put all of my notes that I have on my Ravelry page. Oh, on Ravelry, you can find me as Sergeant Griff's Girl. So it's S-G-T-G-R-I-F-F-S-G-I-R-L, Sergeant Griff's Girl. Um, and I put all of my project notes on Ravelry. So let's see which one is the, this is the front. No, yeah, this is the front. So it's like this. It's supposed to be a three quarter length sleeve, but I just made it short sleeve because I'm always hot. So um, it's like this and it just goes down. I did do short rows for the bust and you can see at the bottom, the back is lower because um, because I added the length up at the bust, I don't know, it just, it was gonna be too short in the back. So um, I made this like garter stitch, curvy back flap. So when I got to here, this was about the length I wanted it, like minus an inch. Then I separated and I did the front in garter stitch for another inch. And I did the back for about two inches down. Um, just to create some extra length so that if I bend over, um, nobody sees anything they don't want to see in the back. So, super easy. Um, last episode, I was right here. So I did about an inch and a half on the main body, plus the inch on the front and the two inches on the back. So it doesn't look like a ton of progress, but um, it was a lot of knitting. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited to have this finished. Today I'm going to take off the progress keeper and I'm going to wash it in the washer and dry it in the dryer and see how it behaves after that and hopefully it doesn't grow a ton. Um, it'll be nice if it grows a little bit. I mean in either direction. It can loosen up. It's not tight but um, it could be a little looser. If, you know, that, I'd be okay with that. Um, and if it grows longer, that'd be okay too. So um, Perkins Cove pullover. It's a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to give too much of it away, but um, I will say it didn't have any shaping in it. They just had you increase needle sizes to kind of make an A-line sweater, um, and I needed more shaping for my body type. I have a very large chest region, so I, um, I did short rows to accommodate for that, and then I did some shaping on the back so that it wouldn't be too baggy and just look oversized. But um, again, I'll put all my notes on Ravelry, but I'm super excited to have this done. I can't wait to wash it so that I can wear it. Um, the ends are all woven in, it just needs a wash and then it's done. But um, <clears throat> I finished it last night, so I didn't have time to wash it and dry it before the podcast today. So that one is all done. Um, next I have three works in progress. You haven't seen any of them. So let's start with some socks. Um, so I'm staying with my parents right now 
and my husband is still back in Arkansas, but um, my parents really wanted to go see the Wonder Woman movie because my dad really liked Wonder Woman growing up, um, and so they wanted to go to the movies. So I went with them, and I wanted to have something to knit on at the movies, but none of my projects were movie knitting appropriate because they all, you know, had increases or decreases or shaping or whatever, or patterns. Um, and like I had, I have one pair of socks on the needles right now, but they're too close to the heel. So I didn't want to knit past the heel during the movies and then have to rip it back. So I started knitting from a sock blank. And I'm not sure if I've showed this before on the podcast, but holy cow, guys. This is a sock blank by um, Andy of Andre Sue Knits. And it is vampire lips. Holy cow. Look at those lips. So this is my first time ever knitting from a sock blank. Um, and this sock blank is a one strand, so it's not for two at a time socks, um, which is perfect because I think that would get a little fiddly, especially being my first ever sock blank. Um, so all you do, for those of you who don't know, a sock blank is knit typically on a machine um, in a big white long, almost like a short scarf. And then the dyer paints on it. Um, so these are all hand painted by Andy. I mean, it's not just stamped. And so then they paint it. And then when you knit it, you just pull it and unravel it. So the yarn you're knitting with is very crinkly, which means my tension is totally different because it is hard to tension crinkly yarn. Um, it's just so much looser and I'm already a loose knitter. So these socks, they fit, I've tried them on, but, um, they're just totally different than any other socks. So this is how it knits up. Totally different, right? I mean, like you can see, let me hold it, try to hold it up. Okay, there we go. You can see the resemblance, like there's the black for inside the mouth um, and the, obviously the lips, but it's totally different. You would never look at this sock and say, oh, that's vampire lips. Um, so it's super fun. And I got probably four inches done at the movie theater. Um, I raced to get the toe done before the movie, like before we went, because obviously I can't do the toe in the dark at the movies. But then all of this was done, um, like from the toe up there, was all done during Wonder Woman. So um, yeah, it's super fun. It looks like it almost looks like crappy knitting, like you're a new knitter and your stitches aren't um, even, but it will all block out, or it should all block out once I'm done knitting it. And once I put it on my foot, it looks just like a normal sock. You can't tell it was a sock blank, but um, it's just when you're knitting it, like when you pull it, they kind of even out a little more. But um, yeah, it's super fun. So these socks will not be equally matched but they'll obviously be the same. So, um, I mean, similar, like it'll be obvious that they go together. So, Sock Blank by Andy of Andre's Who Knit. I absolutely love it. It's just incredible to me how different it is from these lips to this kind of um, pooling spirals. It's so fun. So, um, what else did I wanna say about that? These are just toe up. I think I started with 12 stitches. Um, and I went up to 64. 64 is my standard. It's on a size zero. Oh, these are my high high sharps. So last episode, I talked about how I bought these um, at a yarn shop while I was traveling because they didn't carry the chegus, which are, chegus are what I typically knit with. Um, and I'm loving these. I wouldn't say I like them better than chegus because I think I like the cable or the cord on Chegu is better. Um, but as far as the needles go, they are very sharp. Um, okay, I'm not, I was gonna like pick my nose. Um, they're very sharp, but they're so super nice to work with. So I, if you guys have, or have a store that sells these, I would recommend them. Um, and again, they are the high high sharps, not the high high but high high sharps. The high high were way too blunt. So, um, Size zero, 64 stitches. 
I'd probably have another two inches before I need to put the heel in and I'll just do a fish lips kiss heel. I might see if I have like a rose colored mini and just do a contrast heel. I think that could be pretty. Otherwise, it when I put in the heel, I think it'll change the pooling sequence. Um, and I'm not sure how that would be. I mean, it's not an exact pooling, but we'll see. I'll see what I feel like when I get to it. Uh, so there's the first work in progress. Okay, speaking of socks, I want to digress and show you guys not one of my projects, but somebody else's. So my cousin's children, yeah. Um, I wanna say the girl is like 12, maybe? Um, Shannon, if you're watching this, I'm sorry if I'm totally wrong on her age. But anyways, she learned how to knit a little while ago and she's been knitting scarves. And so she's got the knit stitch down. I didn't have to teach her. Um, I did have to teach her how to purl, but on her bucket list for the summer was to knit socks. So I don't know what made her want to jump from a scarf to socks, um, but that was what she wanted to learn. And she is very determined um, in a good way. So even though I was kind of like, okay, socks can be kind of tricky. I mean, you either have to magic loop them or knit them on double points. And if you've only been doing a scarf like back and forth on two needles, both, you know, magic loop or double points could be kind of overwhelming. So um, I wasn't too sure how she was going to take it once she started knitting. But guys, I did not need to worry at all. So this is her sock. Guys, look at that. So she did a couple rows of the cuff. It's just knit one pearl one while she was over at our house. Um, but it was very slow going because she'd never done the purl stitch. And she wasn't gonna come back to our house for a week. So what we decided is I would finish the, the cuff portion of it for her because then after that it's all knitting and she knows how to do the knit stitch. So she really wanted to take it home and work on it. So this is from a Friday to a Monday that she did all of this. Look at the, I mean those stitches guys are so, they're so even, they're so perfect. Um, yeah, so I am so proud of her. She's using size twos um, and I think we did 54 stitches. I'll have to count to make sure, but um, I'm pretty sure we did 54 stitches for her. Might maybe even 50. Um, so she's ready for the heel. She said this is where, I guess I can show you the pretty side. This is the length she wants it for the heel. Um, so she left it here with me. I'm going to put the heel in and then give it back to her so she can finish going down to the toe. Um, I didn't want to overwhelm her by teaching her how to do a heel. I don't know. You guys with kids, do you teach them how to do everything even if it's a little bit tough or do you I don't even know what I'm trying to say or do you do it like in increments you know like she can do the toe because I mean I think she'll be good at decreases but I didn't know if we do a fish lips kiss heel that's tricky even for adults and same thing if we did a standard heel flapping gusset I mean that's got the short rows it's got the picking up stitches it's got the decreasing um so I don't know and she's totally fine with me doing the heel um, but I don't know. I mean, at that age, what do you guys do? Do you teach them how to do it? I don't know. She wouldn't have been able to do it at home, um, if I taught her how to do a heel. So I think she's just so anxious to get knitting on her sock. So this is what we decided. But let me know what you guys think, because for her next project, I don't know. I don't know how hard to challenge a kid without making it overwhelming, because I don't want them to give up. So that's all. But I'm so proud of her. Um, I would totally wear this sock. This yarn is so fun. Uh, I don't have the label. I think she has the label in her bag. But um, yeah, I mean the stripes are so pretty and her knitting is perfect. There's a couple spots where she dropped a stitch. And so her mom found a coordinating sewing thread and just tied it. So like here, I don't know if it'll show. Right there, she dropped a stitch. And so her mom just tied it with like thread. 
There was another one. Oh yeah, here's a white one. Uh, right there. So um, I thought that was really funny. Because her mom was like, oh yeah, I just found some thread and knotted it and tied it. But it totally works. You guys can't see it from afar. Um, so yeah, so I told her what to do for next time. I was like, just put it on a paper clip or something and I'll fix it. Um, so that was Kylie's sock. So proud of her. Um, I'm not sure when she learned to knit, but she has a very unique style of knitting. Um, but she's so fast at it. So I was like, I don't know that I need to teach her how to change it right now because obviously it works for her. And my whole theory with knitting is if it works for you, do it. So, um, yeah, go Kylie. Okay, back to my works in progress. So, um, we are doing a charity knitting drive. And I'll talk more about that towards the end after the knitting projects. But um, I didn't want to have all of you guys be knitting baby items and me not knit something to donate myself. So... I cast on a flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, and this is in the yarn, it's Lolo did it, and I think these are her old labels, but it's a DK in the color Zombies, so and it's just simple DK. Now, so my mom watches my cousin's kids, like once or twice a week sometimes, and they have been having so much fun reading the names of all of the yarn. So um, when they found out that this one was zombies, they just were cracking up. They thought it was like the most funny thing ever. So this is the yarn and this is the flax sweater. Uh, but I mean, once you know it's zombies, you can totally see, you know, just like the blood and the guts and the pale blue of the skin tone of corpses. I don't know what the black is for, but. It's, t I mean, it totally seems zombie appropriate. So this sweater is knit top down. There's this like garter stitch portion on the sleeves. And then you put the sleeves on um, just waist yarn and knit, you're supposed to knit the body. So for the infant size, it's like for five inches. So I probably have two. So I need another three inches. And then I'll go back and I'll put long sleeves on this one but it is so cute and so little. And I love how fast baby things knit up. Um, but yeah, the yarn, oh, it's so squishy. And so I have two skeins of this. This is what I have left so far. So I'm not sure if I'll get three more inches plus the hem plus the sleeves out of this one ball or if I'll have to break into my second skein. But I was thinking if I don't have to break in the second skein, I could make two and have it be matching sweaters. Um, so these are all going to a local pregnancy crisis center. So I thought even if there's not twins, you know, it would be fun for like two new moms to have baby sweaters that match their friends. Um, so we'll see. It'll all depend on how much more this takes. But flax sweater for a baby. I'm doing the smallest size and I'm doing them on, I want to say size fives. Yeah, size fives, chow goos. These are the fixed ones, um, and they have a curve in them, and I do not like that. My interchangeable set is just, it doesn't have this curve here, and I don't know why that curve really bothers me. But um, I think the chow goo, the chow goo lace don't have the curve, and just the chow goo, I don't know if it's chow goo normal or chow goo red, do have the curve. But, um, this is what I had available, so I don't dislike it enough to not knit with it. I just prefer the straight needle that comes on the interchangeable. So, um, okay, I have one more work in progress and then an acquisition, or two acquisitions, and then I'm gonna show you guys all the baby stuff. So, let's show the other work in progress, which also ties into an acquisition, because I bought yarn to go with it. So, oh my gosh, okay, and this one is housed, let me get it all turned up, in my bags by Awesome Granny bag, which you guys have seen before, but look, I think I showed the Santa Cruz pin before, now I have a matching knitting pin, and the colors are like perfectly, it's that silver with the 
pretty teal. So I don't have a fringe supply bag and I can't afford to pay a hundred bucks for a bag. So they're living on my bags by Awesome Granny. Even though the sea otters aren't really in the stars with the fireflies. But whatever guys, it makes me happy. So that's where it is. And if I had a fringe bag, it would be on a fringe bag. But I don't, so we'll make do. Okay, I started. Oh, so our local knit group on Wednesdays down at the local yarn shop. They are doing a shawl along. So last month we did the Bendy Arrow shawl. And now we've started the Surge by Martina Bain. So this is, it's a very, my our printer was out of ink. Um, but that's one of the pictures of the Surge. And I am using this magic ball. So this is just some minis that somebody, the dyer just magic knotted together and made a ball. Um. So it's not a gradient in the in between the colors it doesn't transition like it's a harsh change from one color to the next but it kind of is an overall gradient so it is so pretty um, I love it the dark purples without being too depressing it's just so pretty so this is my main color and then I bought to be the contrast this shibui knits and the staccato i think staccato is the um yarn I, the color is apple oh i'm gonna sneeze so this is 70 percent merino 30 percent silk i don't know if you guys can read it or if it's too whatever you guys can look it up if you're interested um and these are so they're like little skeins compared to normal skeins and they were $15 a piece um, and it would be like two of them would have been <clears throat> like 10 yards short of what the pattern called for and so I was like I hate to buy a third skein for 10 yards but also I'm a loose knitter and so maybe I'll use up more yards than called for so the yarn shop owner said I could just not wind the third one and keep the receipt and then if I only use the two I can return this one so that was such a good compromise. Um, so I'm trying to keep this one pretty, but I wanted to show you guys it in this skein. Um, so that way, either way, I don't have to worry. If I need more than two, I have the third one, but if I don't use it, I haven't wasted the $15. Sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, so. Oh no, I'm in the middle of a row, darn it. I should have looked at it last night to get it ready for you guys. Okay, but I'll show you. So it starts up here, and so you can see how it started with a dark purple, and then there's green short rows, and then now it's, we've changed, so like right here, right there, is where it changed from the dark purple to this speckledy purple. So I'm not too far into it, we just started it. Um, but I think it's gonna be so fun, it is so squishy. Um, a lot of people on Ravelry ha are adding an extra wedge. They call it an extra surge. So I think there's three or four, and so people do a fourth or a fifth one. Um, so once I get to where the pattern ends, I'll see if it's the size I want or if I want to go ahead and add another one. Especially now that I do have that third skein, um, that is an option, depending on how much extra of the purple I have. So, but this is a like a huge oversized skein um I don't have the tag out here with me but so I have a lot of extra yardage of the purple so I'm thinking I could with that extra third skein of the green I could go ahead and add an extra surge in so I think this is one surge and now I'm repeating this portion with the speckled so this will be the second surge but yeah I think it's going to be so fun um I'm super excited about it this is knit on my chagoos. These are on a size seven. So red cord, seven. See, and these ones are straight. So I like these guys. You see the difference? Um, but yeah. So that is my last work in progress for this week. And my first acquisition, 
of the green yarn. My, oops, let me put the full skein away and the pattern. My second acquisition is a project bag. Now, um, Santa Cruz, where I am, is very close to San Francisco. We're probably like an hour and a half, hour, hour and a half away, depending on traffic. So everybody here is huge Giants fans and Warriors fans. Um, so the Giants are having a stitch and pitch day in July. Um, and so I'm gonna try to go to it with a girlfriend. And there's a group going from the local yarn shop, but I didn't get in with them to get tickets. Like they'd already purchased their tickets. So I'm just gonna get a ticket for my girlfriend and I. Actually, okay, if you guys have ever seen um, Lily of the Ladybug Lily podcast, her and I, we've never met in real life, but we're gonna meet up at the Giants game and go to the Stitch and Pitch together. So I thought that would be super fun um, to, she was the one that actually contacted me and said, hey, you know, I'm in the area, let's, let's try to meet up. So meeting up in San Francisco is kind of, like, it's a decent drive for both of us. So that's totally doable. Um, so we're gonna try to meet up in July at the Stitch and Pitch. So I wasn't planning anything for the Stitch and Pitch, but then I was on Instagram and you guys know how dangerous Instagram is with enabling. And I saw Whimsy Stitches. It's Rick. Uh, Whimsy Stitches. Turn it around so you guys can see. So I follow him on Instagram and he posted a baseball bag. Holy cow guys, is this not perfect? So it's clear, it's got the baseball stitching. Um, even the inside is pretty. And the little pull tab um, is coordinated like a baseball. And it's got a handle, and I love handles. So I had to purchase this. Um, so this is gonna be my Stitch and Pitch project bag. And I don't know if I'll coordinate my project to be maybe like Giants themed socks. Um, or just whatever I'm working on at the time. Right now, my zombie flax sweater is living there. Let me show you guys how it is once you have a project in it. So it's like that. Super cute. I'm so excited about it. And I had seen on Instagram, he had, he just posted this fabric and he's like, new bags are coming to the shop. And so I contacted him and I had said, could you do a custom bag? Because he... He makes these kind of bags in his shop. I said, could you knit, or could you sew me a clear baseball bag? Um, and he didn't see my message. And, which is fine, because sometimes Instagram, I don't know, you don't always get the messages right away. But um, in his shop update, like the next day or that afternoon, there was this bag. And so I was like, well, I don't know if he did it just for me or if he was gonna do it anyways. So I purchased it. And then when he went to write me a thank you, he's like, Oh, I just saw your message. Um, so it was just too funny that the one baseball bag he put in the shop was the one I had asked him to custom do. Um, and so it was meant to be. I purchased it. I absolutely love it. It's a little crinkly because I've had it in the car. <laughs> um, but yeah, so fun. I love being able to see my project. And I love that like the handles, when you go to games, you can put them around the cup holder on the chairs. Um, or the seats or whatever. And then that way your project bag can dangle from the stadium seats without having to be on your lap or on the disgusting floor of the stadiums. Cause you know how stadiums like people's beer spills and there's just all sorts of gunk on the cement floors. So if you can hang your project bag up, um, it just keeps it clean. So that's why I was so excited about the handle for the game. So now I'm all set. I just need to confirm my tickets for the stitch and pitch and we're gonna have a grand old time. But that's not until July. And I already requested that day off and the next day off because I think it's a night game. And so I work at Starbucks and some of my shifts are like four in the morning. So I did not wanna have to have a four in the morning shift after I went to the giant stitch and pitch the night before. So, um, okay, that is all of my knitting. So if you are not interested in the charity baby knitting drive that I'm gonna talk about, you guys don't have to stick around. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. 
if you're interested in the charity knitting drive or and if you want to see what we have received by all means stick around because we have a ton of baby items um, and I'm so excited to share them all okay I'm just gonna scooch on my table over have a glass of water now okay charity baby knitting drive this is what we're doing I was gifted a ton of independent dyed, mostly fingering weight yarn. And I want to share, I don't want to just hoard it and um, keep it all for myself because it's so much more fun to share it with you guys. So I came up, we came up with the idea to have a charity knitting drive for the local pregnancy crisis center slash maternity home. Um, so what we're doing is I am asking anybody who wants to participate can mail me items to donate to the maternity home. So what can you knit? You can knit or crochet or sew or whatever. Um, it doesn't have to be just knitting. When I say knit, I just mean create. You can knit items for baby. So baby hats, baby sweaters, baby socks, baby blankets, whatever, baby bibs, um, whatever you think a baby might want or a mom might want for baby knit it crochet it sew it whatever um or something for the mom if you want to knit a shawl to use as a um, cover-up when mom's breastfeeding or just something to pamper mom um you know it's fun for mom to get all of the little baby items but it's also fun to get something for herself so something for baby something for new mom um if you can justify it and make it work then what I'm going to do is send you a skein of this dye, indie dyed yarn that I have. Um, so we put a date limit on it because I don't want to run out of yarn. So we're going to do this until July 31st, which means you have until July 31st to mail out your packages. Um, that way it gives you plenty of knitting time and I have a cap on it so I can kind of assess how much yarn I have left over. Um, Guys, it has been like Christmas at the P.O. Box every day. And it's it's so fun because I get to open up all the packages, read all of your sweet notes. Um, so many people have sent encouraging notes and um, little goodies. So it is so appreciated. It is so much fun to do this. Um, even though I know at the end, none of the baby items are for me. But it is just fun to see what you guys have been excited about making. So, without further ado, I'm going to go through these fast. They are in no order, and if you've knit multiple items, they might not be together because um, I've been showing everybody that comes over all of these baby things. So, um, yeah, it's been super fun. The My cousins that my mom watches, they have been so excited about this too. So, I want to say they're like 9 and 11. Um, Kylie, the one that did the sock, I think she's like 11, maybe 12. And her younger brother is maybe nine. I'm so bad with kids' ages. Um, but they have been helping pick the yarn. So all of the yarn that I, we are sending out in, you know, like in response to what you mailed out here, the kids picked out. They put on the return address labels. So, um, yeah, they've been having so much fun. Like, oh, I think this person would like this color. You know, they don't know you. I don't know you. But, um... They've just been picking the colors they like and putting them in the bags. So it's been so much fun having them help out too and having them get excited. Um, and they've been going through all of the finished items that we've got, you know, and talking about what hats they like and what baby sweaters they like. So it's been pretty stinking cute to have them be a part of this too. But okay, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys all of the stuff that we've got in and then I will update the tally in Ravelry. So I didn't mention earlier, but we have a Ravelry podcast group. It's the Jessica Ruth Knits podcast group. And there is a forum thread in the group that has all of the information about the charity knitting drive. So it has the address where you guys can send your packages. It has all of the guidelines. Um, and I'm also doing a running tally of like how many baby hats we've got, how many baby sweaters, how many this and that. So, um, after I show everything on the podcast this episode, I will update that tally so you guys can see how much stuff we have got so far. So, okay, without further ado, I'm going to go through these fast. 
and I'm going to preface it with saying they are all super cute. I'm not going to really embellish on them, um, but they're all cute. I love them all, and let's take a look. Baby hat. Baby hat. Camo baby hat. Baby hat. Another one. Another one. A little knit one. Okay, that's the first group I grabbed. Alright. Itty bitty baby sweater. I'm thinking this might have to be a doll or maybe it could fit a preemie. Um, with little lace on the back. So cute. Another little baby hat. A bigger baby hat. And the little elf hat, like with a little tassel, so cute. Uh, a baby sweater, like cute little buttons. I'm gonna like put them in piles as I do this, so it'll make it easier to tally. Another crocheted baby hat. A little knit one. Okay, there's two of these baby blankets, so I'm going to open up one. To show you guys these are crocheted and they have the little hood super cute they're really big so I won't be able to get it all on the screen but there's a teal one mm, and they smell so good I don't know what you wash these with but it is delicious oh I love it okay so there's that teal one and there's a yellow one there's a little Baby vertebrae sweater. Get on the sweater pile. This one uh, she did this adorable sweater. And then there's even a matching baby hat. It's so cute. Another hat. Okay. This one did a cabled. It's going to blow out because of the red, but it's a really pretty red. And then there's these little baby booties that go along with it. Then there's this one with a little tag. This itty bitty little one. I'm sorry if I'm going fast, but there's so much to show you guys. Um, little booties. Also, in the Ravelry group, there's a forum thread to show what you guys are making. So if you want to post what you're knitting or crocheting or sewing for the charity knitting drive, you can post it in there. And um, that way if people have any questions about what's been knit, they can ask you directly if you've shared in there. Little baby socks. I was going to say slippers. Another little one with a pom-pom. Guys, I just go... I die over pom-poms. I love them. Super cute. There. Three of these matching hats. So cute. I have to make another hat pile because my hat pile is getting too big. There's four of these little hats. Okay, we're almost done with one box. Another pair of baby socks. Another pair of the natural colored baby socks. All right, we're getting there, guys. This little one. Our first shawl for Mama. Look how pretty that one is. More, oh, I'm sorry every time I bend over and it like blows out everything. Okay, this, I'm going to keep them all. I'm not going to show all of these because they're so similar, but I do want to say something about these ones. So these are from Aquila of the Aquila Dahun. I think it's Dahun. It might be Dahun. 
um, podcast. Sorry, Aquila, I'm not sure how you say it. Um, she mailed these yesterday, and these are by far Kylie and Evan's favorite baby items. Um, everybody that came over yesterday, we had some family come over, they pulled out these headbands to show and say, look what this lady made. So, she made these little baby headbands, and they are um, stretchy because there's a little rubber band, and they all have these little flowers on them, but then the flowers come off and it's a barrette. So it can grow with the baby. You could have the headband and the barrette. Um, and when it's on the headband, it's just super cute like that. So the kids thought this, oh, and she sent, there's so many fun different ones. Um, and there's probably, and there's so many more in the bag. But the kids absolutely loved these. So um, I might have to figure out how to knit a version to show, like to have Kylie make some. Cause I'm sure Kylie would love to make these for um, like her little cousins that she has. So, so cute, so fun. She could even make a size for her. Um, I think that would be super cute. So there's a whole bunch of baby headbands. Um, Aquila, I'm gonna have to talk to you about all of those cause they're so cute. Okay, she also sent baby hat. And all colored. And a little ribbed one. And a bigger one, this is like that chenille stuff. All right, last bag and then we're done. But majority one, after last episode, when I said I wasn't sure if I was going to show you guys everything, everybody said they wanted to see all the baby nets. So that's why I'm um, showing you everything that I've got so far. Well, since last episode. Look at how cute. Oh, these are so fun. A little baby sweater. And, oh, this is the flax. So this is the one that I'm knitting too, out of my zombie yarn. And it looks like this one she added stripes so cute okay guys so much baby stuff and this is just in this week um or since last episode because last episode i showed you everything i had got up until that point so i'm just floored by your generosity you guys have sent so many adorable things um and it's fun to see i mean some people just send a hat, which is totally, totally acceptable. I don't want to diminish that at all. But some people just send one item and some people send big, huge packages with, you know, an abundance of baby items. So it's fun to see everybody else get excited about this. Um, and some of you guys have sent such encouraging notes or little, um, like double point, double point needle cozies um, and lotion for me. And so it's been so fun just to read your notes um, and all of the words of encouragement that you guys have sent for me to go through IVF and just to see your excitement about donating to the pregnancy house. So um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to collect all of this stuff until I'll probably give it till mid-August. Um, and then I'll take a picture of everything that we've got in so far and... I will take it all down to donate to the Sienna house. Now, if they say it's too much, like if they can't handle all of this stuff, um, I'll let them take what they want and then I will find another pregnancy center um, around here to donate it to. So while at first we're gonna donate to the Sienna house up until they say that's enough. And then, cause I don't know how many, I wanna say they have like 20 mothers at a time. Um, and I think the mothers have like six months after they give birth to kind of get out on their own um, and then they take in new moms. I think that's how it works. Um, I'll have to find out. But so I don't know if they like if I if we donate, you know, like 200 baby hats. Well, if they only have 20 moms at a time, they might not want to store it all, you know, until they go through it. So I'm going to give them the option of accepting everything. But I'm also going to be prepared if they say, you know, we can't take that much, then I will, I'll just donate all the rest of it to another maternity home and so on. If they, you know, if we have too much for that one, 
Which, wouldn't that be awesome to have too much to donate to any one house and to get to spread it out over multiple houses? I just think that would be so cool. Um, so it will all be donated to maternity homes or pregnancy crisis centers or, um, you know, babies that need it. Um, it just might not be this one specific house once they say that's enough. So I just want to be upfront with you guys um, in case you are thinking everything is going to go to this one house. I will give them the option to take it all, but if they say that's enough, then I will donate it to the next house. So um, I won't just keep whatever I don't donate to them. So um, everything will be donated to a worthy cause. Let's just leave it at that. So. You guys, if you have any questions, you can ask me on the Ravelry thread. You can find me on Instagram. I'm Jessica Ruth Nitz. You can ask me there. Um, those are the two easiest ways to get in contact with me. Um, the Ravelry forum, once again, has the address, the PO box that you can send all of this to. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, if I didn't mention anything, if I didn't mention it here in the podcast, go check out the Ravelry group. Because I think I covered everything when I set up that forum thread. Um, people have asked me if they can use specific fibers. Like, can I use Angora? Can I use this? If it is, if it is soft enough that you would put it on your own baby, go ahead. Um, I wouldn't do 100% wool if it's non-superwash. Just because um, it could be A, too scratchy. Or B, if it would felt. Um, so acrylic's fine, Angora if it's soft is fine, wool is fine. Um, just use your own judgment. If you guys would put it on your own kids or your nieces and nephews if you don't have kids, um, then send it. Just don't send anything that is, um, you know, like an opal sock yarn might be a little bit too scratchy for a baby. I don't know. You guys, it's up to you. If you want to donate it, you'll still get a skein of yarn in return, um, but just use your judgment. So far everything has been absolutely perfect and fantastic and there's nothing I would say eh, maybe not this one so um yeah you guys have done so good and have been so generous so I'm having so much fun with this um I hope you guys are too also depending on if we have extra yarn after July 31st we might do another chair like a different charity drive so we're just gonna have to see how big of a response we get to the baby drive and how much yarn I have left over after that. Um, so you guys might have a second opportunity to knit something and get another skein of yarn. But again, it all depends on how much yarn we have and uh, kind of what's going on at that time. So for now, we're gonna, you guys have until July 31st to mail packages. If you send a box that has 10 items, you only get one skein. If you send two boxes, you only get one skein. Um, that way we can have the most amount of people participate and everybody will get one skein. Um, Cause it's not very fair if you crochet 10 baby hats and it takes you an afternoon versus somebody that, you know, knits a baby blanket and it takes them a month. Um, you know, it's not whoever can complete the most items the fastest gets the most yarn. So I want to be able to spread the love to as many people as we can because um, that's kind of the whole point in all of this is to just share the yarn that I got and spread the, the yarn love with you guys. So that is everything I have for this week. I'm going to go wash my linen sweater and see how it softens up. Um, it's pretty soft now, but I just want to see what it's like after I wash it. And yeah, I'm going to go mail all of the packages in so that we have all of the yarn that we packaged up yesterday in response to all of this stuff. And I'm going to go mail it off today. And that way we will have a clean slate for this week. So I know any packages that come in from now, um, they will be shown on next week's podcast. They will be tallied up for next week and their yarn will ship next week. So if you guys have seen your baby items in today's episode, be on the lookout for your yarn because I'm going to go mail it out this afternoon. So that is everything. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching. Thank you for mailing baby items. Um, yeah, it's, I've been having so much fun with it. 
So thank you guys for um, just brightening my day and sending in baby items. I love you all. I'm so glad you came by to watch and I hope you have a great week and happy knitting. All right, I'll see y'all next time. Take care.